Hey guys, welcome to another episode. My name is Alex and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can make your Mercedes-Benz or any car for that matter handle and feel like brand new. That way you know you're keeping your car That song is about cars, right? Now, if this is your first time checking into my YouTube channel, this is my 2005 Mercedes-Benz C55 AMG. And even though this is the, the most reliable, reliable cheapest to fix, and inexpensive, inexpensive AMG, AMG car ever, ever built, built, period, period. Even the C55 can suffer from a loose feeling steering and suspension that's more often than not caused by worn out control arm bushings like this one. Worn out control arm bushings can cause your car to feel sloppy, they can make loud clunking and knocking noises, and they can negatively affect your tire wear by throwing off your alignment. And ain't nobody got time for that. Now I'm gonna show you four different DIY methods of replacing the control arm bushings on my C-Class. But what you're about to see in this video applies to many different Mercedes-Benz models, and the same basic procedure applies to many different cars outside of Mercedes as well. So if you have a control arm that in any way, shape, or form resembles this one, or a torque strut or thrust arm that looks like this one with a bushing on one end and a ball joint on the other end, this video applies to you. So if you guys wanna get a factory style workshop manual for practically any car, this is a manual that's gonna show you step-by-step -step instructions with pictures, with torque specs, for just about any job you can think of, check out the link in the video description box and the coupon code, and you can pick up your own workshop manual for only about $20. All right, method number one is by far the easiest and the cheapest method of the bunch, but it does require the use of that special tool right there, which I'll show you guys in a minute. You're gonna love this thing. Uh, first, what we need to do is lower this part of the control arm down. So let me show you guys how to do that. First, you need to remove the four bolts that hold the sway bar onto the subframe. Start off by hand with a ratchet to break the bolts loose, and then you can use your 18-year-old Makita electric impact to speed things along. Now take two 21 millimeter wrenches, preferably ratcheting wrenches, and start to turn the large bolt and nut that goes through the thrust arm bushing. Once you remove the nut at one end, just push the bolt through and you can lower the front of the arm. All right guys, with the front of the arm lowered, you can really get a good look at just how bad this bushing is. Check this out. As you can imagine, a car like this is not gonna handle very well at all. But luckily we are just a couple minutes away from replacing this really bad bushing on the car by using this. This is a specialty tool made by Bomb Tools, and I did get this from FCP Euro, so it does carry their lifetime guarantee. Now, this allows you to extract and install control arm or thrust arm bushings like these on the car, saving you a bunch of time, and time equals money. Now, this will require an initial investment. You gotta buy the tool. It's about $260, but considering that most shops charge anywhere between two and four hours worth of labor to replace bushings like this. This will pay for itself in just one use and you can split it with your friends if you'd like. Uh, I like having my very own and check out the easiest instructions you've ever seen. They list out what chassis number each set of instructions are for and I'll list all the chassis numbers for the Mercedes cars uh, that you can use this tool on but quite honestly, I think these cups will work on many different makes and models outside of Mercedes-Benz as well. Uh, the instructions are laid out very, very nicely. They list the number of each part of the tool clearly here. Uh, so this is what you would follow to extract and this is what you would follow to install. And then each part of the tool is clearly labeled as well. So I'll be using uh, a number 10 cup to extract the bushing. Uh, so let me show you guys exactly how we set this up and how easy it is to replace your own control arm bushings. Okay, two things before we get to replacing this nasty bushing on the C55. First of all, you want to remember the orientation of the old bushing. Technically, these new bushings can be installed any which way, but there is a proper orientation. And in a lot of cases, the bushing will give you a marker or an indicator showing you exactly how these go in. So in this case, they give you this black little piece of rubber on the very bottom, so you know that it gets installed this way uh, and not this way or anything in between. 
Also, there is a beveled edge to most uh, of the control arms on one side, and this tells you which side you wanna push the bushing through. That way, the cup that you're using to push it out doesn't get jammed up on the thrust arm and mar up the aluminum. Uh, so let me show you guys how to set this up. It's really easy once you've picked out uh, all your proper cups is you're gonna put the receiving cup on one end and it'll fit really nicely, uh, perfectly over that side of the bushing. And then you're gonna use the proper uh, extraction cup right here and your nut on one end. And you're just gonna wanna spend uh, a little bit of time getting this perfectly centered. That way, like I said, the cup is not getting caught up on the aluminum uh, and damaging it. Okay, so once the tool is all set up like this and this is perfectly lined up, uh, you're gonna be using a 24. I'm using a massive ratchet uh, and a deep well on this end and a 21 ratcheting wrench on this end. And then guys, it's just a matter of doing this. And what, it, what we're doing right now is we're pushing the bushing in and it's gonna end up completely in the receiving cup. And this is really easy. Uh, take you maybe a minute. Oh, my Snap-on ratchet just malfunctioned there. Uh, this will take you maybe a minute to do, and then you're ready to install the new one. Okay, once you've pushed the bushing all the way through the tool, it just comes out very easily like this, and here is your bad bushing. So now we're gonna set the cups up according uh, to the installation instructions so we can get a much nicer looking bushing on the thrust arm of the C55. As you can imagine, installing the new bushing is the extraction in reverse order with some different cups. So it's super easy. Uh, just make sure that you have your little marker facing down or wherever it's facing on your particular car and that you're going in from the beveled edge. So we're just gonna make sure, spend a little bit of time making sure this is perfectly centered so it's sitting in there exactly how Mercedes-Benz wanted. And then you're gonna set the tool up just like you saw for the extraction, uh, just with some different cups that are set up to help you line this bushing up centered with the thrust arm. They even give you a little window here so you can see the bushing going in. It's really, really nice. Uh, and then you just put your nut in on this end. Again, make sure everything is lined up perfectly. And you're just gonna crank this down and you're gonna push the bushing in the arm that way. So I'm not gonna bore you with that. You guys could probably imagine me going like this for a few minutes, uh, but let me do that. And then I'll show you guys uh, what you need to know as far as tightening the arm back into the subframe because that's very, very important. That has got to be one of the nicest bushings I've ever seen. Check it out, guys. One down, one more to go. And I must say, this has to be one of the most satisfying jobs you can do to your car, especially if you've been driving around with a worn out control arm bushing for a long time. Not only is your car going to drive so much better, but this job is just so easy. I think if I wasn't filming, this would only take me like 15, 20 minutes per side. So what I wanted to show you was how to properly reinstall the arm into the subframe. So obviously you're going to hold it back up like this and then you're gonna be reinstalling uh, this big bolt with the two washers and the nut at one end. But what I do is I just get it snug while the car is up in the air and I don't fully tighten it until the wheels are back on the car and it's loaded on the ground. If you were to fully tighten this into the subframe while the car was up in the air, you would make this the normal resting position of the bushing so that when you finally did lower it with the wheels on it, this would actually twist and put a lot of unnecessary stress on the bushing which will cause it to wear out quicker and can actually affect your ride height in some cases. So you don't wanna do that. I know it's a pain in the butt to get on your back and tighten this uh, on the ground and an alignment rack helps out a lot with that. Uh, but that is what you must do to properly reinstall the bushing on one of these cars. Uh, so let's move on to method number two, which is gonna require us to take out uh, the entire arm. And method two is gonna segue nicely into method three and four, which I'll be able to explain much quicker since we've already done the bulk of the work. So you guys already saw me take down the front part of the arm uh, from before. So now I'm going to show you how to fully remove the arm from the car uh, and install this bushing outside of the vehicle. To begin, you got to remove the 21 millimeter nut at the bottom of the ball joint. You can either use a ratchet by hand or an impact like this one. Thread the nut back on just a little bit and then lube up the ball joint boot. Now it's best to use a universal ball joint spreader like this one to safely pop the joint out of the knuckle. And these are only about 25 bucks on Amazon, so I'll leave a link down below. The tool slides over the rubber boot and under the stud of the joint, and then you tighten the top bolt of the tool, which affects spreads the joint away from the knuckle. Then when you tap the tool with a hammer, you get a pop like this. 
So after you safely pop this joint out of the spindle, you'll notice that you still can't get this thing out of the car. And that is because the strut is getting in the way. So you do have to move the strut, but you don't have to remove it from the car or anything hard like that. This is really easy. All you have is a bolt right here, a bolt right here, and an inverted Torx bolt right up there. So you remove those three and that will give you the proper clearance to just simply pull this arm out of the way. So let me take that stuff apart and I'll show you how easy it is to take the arm out so we can set it up and push this old nasty bushing out of it. Okay, so I have the bottom bolts out. So now all we're gonna do is simply remove the top inverted Torx bolt like this. Make sure that you've taken these wiring harnesses out of their little clips so that when you pull this back, they don't get all stretched out and they have plenty of play at this point. All you need to do is simply remove the arm. Simply, there, there you go. That's it, it's out of the car. Okay, if you guys have never used a hydraulic press, they are a ton of fun and obviously, whoa, this is method number two, is using a hydraulic press to press in your bushings. And I think I got that pretty even. Uh, so guys, this is a new addition to my garage and I don't expect all of you guys to go out and buy one of these if you're doing DIY work in your garage, but you'd be surprised to know that a hydraulic press is not all that expensive. This 20 ton pneumatic press was about $500 and I'll leave a link down below, but you can get a manual press for about $300 or even less. And these have about a dozen different uses in the garage. You can do all sorts of bushings for practically any car. You can do bearings. Worst case scenario, you can start one of those YouTube channels where you're crushing things like crystal balls and molten lava and getting like millions and millions of views. Uh, so for this, you do have to take out the control arm from the car. Uh, and as you saw there, I did use the cups that came in uh, the other toolkit. Uh, but you can use other types of cups. You can buy the ones that are specifically made for whatever car you have. And some guys will even use universal cups like out of a ball joint press or they'll use big sockets and stuff like that. So you can basically take care of any kind of control arm bushing or any bushing for that matter with a hydraulic press. So these are really, really nice. Uh, the Black Widow brand is the same company that makes this parts washer. So I'll list both of these down below. Uh, so far, so good with this one. It's working very, very well and it looks Pretty awesome in black. That's what I went with it originally. Uh, so you guys are probably also wondering what these awesome bushings are on these thrust arms right here. Now this is a new product from FCP Euro. So this is a high performance bushing. This is meant for handling. It's a lot more firm than the factory Mercedes bushing. And this is gonna really tighten up the feel of your car and make it handle a lot better. I won't be putting these on the C55, but I might be putting these on another project coming up, a non-AMG Mercedes project project that I want to handle a lot better than it does from the factory. So stay tuned uh, for that. And then of course, the factory Mercedes bushings I got from FCP as well. I think they're about 50 bucks for both of them with the lifetime warranty. So let's move on to methods number three and four. And I'll be able to go over these very briefly uh, because they go hand in hand with just about everything you've already seen in this video. If you're watching this video and thinking, Alex, I am not buying any special tools, let alone a hydraulic press. I just have a normal garage and normal hand tools. So what do I do? Well, method number three is exactly for you. In method number three, you're going to remove your control arm or your thrust arm, just like you saw me do. And you're going to take this along with your brand new bushings to a local repair shop. I used to do this all the time and they would usually charge me about $50 in labor to press out the old bushing and press in the new bushing. So figure you've got 50 bucks in the new bushing. You got about 50 bucks in the labor to have the job done. $100 in and you have brand new control arm or thrust arm bushings on your car. Now remember I said shops charge about two to four hours to do this job depending on your model and at a hundred and twenty five or hundred and fifty bucks an hour you're gonna save two three four hundred dollars by doing this yourself at home. Next up we have you guessed it 
Method number four. In this method, we're gonna be replacing the entire arm. Now, this would apply to people that have a bad ball joint at the other end, and this is really easy to figure out. When this is still on your car, all you do is just kind of tug up and down on the arm from here, and if you see any movement at all in this joint, you need to replace the entire arm. Uh, so in that case, the bushing, not this awesome new bushing, but the normal bushing is already pressed into the new arm. These are about $100 each, so not too bad. Bad. This would also apply to people maybe with higher mileage or someone that just really loves their car and just wants a nice new shiny arm on their car. Uh, they would just buy the entire arm with the bushings already pressed in. So you figure $200, you got two brand new arms with new joints and new bushings. That's not a bad deal either. All right guys, I gotta finish up the thrust arms on the C55, but stay tuned for some future videos on this car because I'll be performing two horsepower modifications to the naturally aspirated 5.5 liter, and I'm gonna do these modifications at the drag strip. So we're gonna be doing back to back to back testing. We'll run the car bone stock as is, then I'll do one modification, run the car again. Then we'll do a second modification and run the car again and see if we can get it to go fast faster in a very real world situation. Uh, this is some content that I wanted to bring you guys for a long time, so I'm really, really excited about that. With that being said, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, hit the thumbs up button, share the video, drop a comment down below, and subscribe if you're new. I hope that you all have a fantastic day, and I'll see you all in the next video.